Australia's 30th Prime Minister, Scott Morrison, has announced his retirement from Parliament at the end of next month, nearly two years after his government's crushing election defeat. Posting on social media, Mr Morrison said he plans to take on new challenges in the global corporate sector and spend more time with family. Political reporter Jane Norman takes a look back on his 16-year political career. A self-described bulldozer. A curry cooking, league loving, daggy dad from the Shire. Yeah. Hey, we go. The marketing man turned member for Cook was continually defining. It is with humility. And redefining himself. Thank you. From the minister tasked with stopping the boats. And that would go to one water operations, which um, we're not providing any further detail on. To the treasurer. This is Cole. Don't be afraid. Who accidentally became prime minister. This is my leader. <laughs> There you go. And I'm ambitious for him. Yeah, good on you. Thanks, Gomo. <laughs> Only to win the unwinnable election. I have always believed in miracles. It turned out it'd be his last. A misjudged Hawaiian holiday ensured any honeymoon was short-lived. You know, I don't hold a hose, mate. Soon he wouldn't have a choice. A generation-defining crisis forced the Prime Minister to act. This will put us all to the test at no time like this since the Second World War. A wartime style cabinet was set up, the country locked down and the biggest ever economic rescue package rolled out. Now is the time to dig deep. Australia emerged with one of the lowest COVID death rates and highest vaccine rates in the world, imperfect as the response was. It's not a race, it's not a competition. Morrison achieved what his predecessors couldn't, a net zero climate net commitment zero by 2050. Well, good morning from Australia. And sealed an historic defence deal. The first major initiative of AUKUS will be to deliver a nuclear-powered submarine fleet for Australia. But the man lauded within his party as a tactical genius had a blind spot. Caught flat-footed in his response to a series of allegations, he failed to sense the simmering anger. His critics started circling. Do you think he lied to you? I don't think. I know. And as the election drew closer, it led an all-out assault on his character. A bully who has no moral compass. You may not like everything we've done. You may not like me that much. Voters had made up their minds and on the 21st of May delivered their verdict in brutal fashion. I've always believed in Australians and their judgment and I've always been prepared to accept their verdicts. Turfed from the top job, he sought no further leadership role. Scott Morrison owes the Australian people an apology. But decisions he made as leader would soon come back to haunt him. The multiple ministry scandal earning him a rare parliamentary rebuke. Morrison, defiant. The politics of retribution and nothing less. Yeah. Throughout a career of constant change, a few strong constants endured. With Jenny and Abby and Lily. They are the greatest miracle in my life. My family and my faith. Family is the stuff of life and there is nothing more precious. Sources of strength in 15 years of public glare. Take me to the April sun and Cuba. I can't remember the words. Oh, and now in whatever lies beyond the sunset of that career. Jane Norman, ABC News, Canberra. Let's stay with this announcement from Scott Morrison, Chief Election Analyst Anthony Green is with me in the studio. Hi there, Anthony. Um, so Scott Morrison, as we heard there, has held the seat of Cook since 2007, a long time. What's been his experience there? Well, I mean, Cook is a safe Liberal seat. It's been held by the Liberal Party continuously for 50 years. He's got a margin of 12%. He became the candidate back in 2007 in sort of slightly controversial circumstances. There was a lot of factional fights in the Liberal Party at the time. He'd been a state director. Um, then became a candidate for Cook and at the second attempt, uh, a second ballot, was chosen as the candidate with a lot of backing from Canberra but disputing the local branches. But he's been very popular as local member having got into Parliament, um, moved to the front bench in opposition, in government became the Minister for Immigration in a very high profile ro role in the Abbott government which establishes his rec reputation as a tough man and, and reset immigration politics to a large extent and it's treated very differently in the same way that John Howard had done 
a decade earlier. Um, he opted out of becoming treasurer under Tony Abbott and instead became treasurer under Malcolm Turnbull in that change of leadership and then came up the middle when Peter Dutton challenged uh, Malcolm Turnbull for leadership and um, became party leader and prime minister. And what kind of politician is he? How would you describe him? Um, he's very, very... He's a good performer in terms of selling a, selling a story. Um, some people he might, some people might think he spends more time on the politics and the policy at times. I think it would be one criticism of him. But he's a fearsome campaign. It was showed by the 2019 election campaign. A lot of his own front, front bench didn't think he had much of a chance of winning. But he went in there, campaigned really hard. Um, Labor's campaign sort of did certainly sort of help the government get re-elected. Uh, the issue became sometimes as much about the the uh, opposition's policy as it much was about as about Scott Morrison. Scott Morrison won that election, uh, the miracle election that everybody everybody now talks about. But then in his second term, the problems emerged, and, and to some extent, a lot of that surrounded COVID. We had the two years of lockdown, um, and all the. Um, backflips, the difficulties the government had to go through in trying to sort of run the economy in a time of COVID, uh, departing from the usual way you run tight budgets to actually try and um, keep, the co co keep the economy afloat during COVID. But things like the problems of the fires, uh, how effectively they dealt with COVID, um, how they had fights with the state government so during the COVID period, undermined his authority and come the 2022 election, um, after nine years in government, then at his second election as Prime Minister, the electorate opted for change. So his departure now means a by-election in Cook. What's going to be the timing? Uh, once he's resigned from Parliament, um, he'll inform the Speaker and the Speaker will issue a writ. Once the writ is issued, there's a minimum of five weeks. So it can't be held on the same day as the Dunkley by-election. So you're looking at maybe later in March. I'm not sure when Easter is at the moment, but it would be at the earliest later in March. Anthony, thanks for your insights. Thank you.